Let's bring in our guests for this hour as we watch what's going on there inside of the courtroom. Trial attorney Trey Gober is with us. Trey, this is it for the evidence in front of this jury, essentially. They are going to be hearing closing arguments, but tell me what you think about the cross of this witness. Do you think that the prosecution was able to try to cut down this witness who has all these credentials, has worked with the National Hockey League just to help players be more safe, and he's bringing that expertise into this courtroom? Uh, absolutely not. The prosecution just did a great job for the defense. We know that because the defense didn't have any further questions. Uh, they didn't even try to redirect. The prosecution set up, uh, well, it's possible, it's possible, it's possible. Remember, their burden is beyond a reasonable doubt. And so this witness, every single time he was asked a question, said, well, it's possible that it was from that, but it could have been this or this or that. And that's going to be closing argument for the defense all day. Uh, so really uh, a, a strong witness for the defense here. Let's bring in trial attorney Trey Grober, who is watching along with us before we go to a break. Trey, when we hear these victim impact statements being read, it means so much, not just for this trial, but often to the victim's family. This is part of a grueling process for them, the grieving they're already doing, your take on this being an important part of what the jury has to consider when they're thinking about what should happen to the man who committed this horrible murder. Absolutely. These victim impact statements are, are very powerful. Uh, they're unimpeachable. Uh, the defense has a difficulty. Obviously, they can't come up and do anything to question this person's sincerity or credibility with how they feel uh, about you know, the, the life that was taken in this circumstance. So it, it puts the defense in a tough spot. You know, ultimately, this case, whether there will be a death penalty or not, will, was decided in jury selection. The defense will have, have, will see if the defense was able to put on at least one or two jurors who are going to hold out on, on the death penalty on this case. It's a very, very tough case for the defense and very sad circumstances for the family. Yeah, you mentioned jury selection. It is important to know that all of these jurors have let the court know that they could find for the death penalty if they decide that it is warranted in this case. Trey Grover, stand by. We are going to squeeze in a break, but we'll get you back in for more of this penalty phase going on right now in Florida for Wade Wilson. All right, while they go look for their next witness, uh, likely another victim impact statement, let's bring back in trial attorney Trey Gober. Uh, Trey, that last uh, witness on the stand just really going a step further with her statement, asking, imploring these jurors to look closely at this picture to see the person who was killed. We understand the defense is going to be calling about 17 witnesses, a lot more of an effort than we saw from them in the guilt phase, really not any effort to try and convince this jury that he was not guilty, but that's not uncommon for us to see defense attorneys take that strategy. Exactly. Uh, defense attorneys in a case like this have to decide early on is the strategy to win at guilt innocence or is it to win at uh, the punishment phase and, and have a life imprisonment rather than death. It seems from everything that we've seen, everything that we know that that strategy is to try to have a, at least one juror say no as to the death penalty uh, for, for the defendant. It's, it's a tragic loss. Um, excellent witness for for the victim uh, and for for the state it's going to be a difficult case for the for the defense uh, to to convince somebody on this jury who's already committed to being open to the death penalty uh, to to not uh, decide for death for this yeah. defendant really difficult. And in Florida, you know, it's been transforming there, Trey, in terms of whether or not you need a unanimous jury for any cases that have happened since that decision. You don't need unanimity there for the death penalty. That was, of course, after the Parkland School shooter case where there was one juror and then it, it grew to three, but one in deliberations who was against the death penalty. And even though the majority wanted death, uh, his life was spared, uh, but that can that can really make a difference for a defense. Absolutely, this is uh, death penalty cases are some of the most litigated in our appellate courts. 
uh, it's one of the reasons why it's, it's so expensive. And so we'll see the Supreme Court likely weigh in on this further. Absolutely. Trey, thank you for those comments. We do have to get to a break, but we'll have more from this penalty phase for Wade Wilson on the other side, plus a live report from Matt Johnson in the Karen Reed case.